Letters of Samuel Rutherford by Samuel Rutherford Letter number one to a Christian gentlewoman Mistress, my love in Christ remembered to you. I was indeed sorrowful at my departure from you, especially since you were in such heaviness after your daughter's death. Yet I do persuade myself you know that the weightiest end of the cross of Christ that is laid upon you lieth upon your strong Saviour. For Isaiah saith that in all your afflictions he is afflicted. Chapter 63 verse 9 O blessed second, who suffereth with you, and glad may your soul be, even to walk in the fiery furnace, with one like unto the Son of Man, who is also the Son of God. Courage up your heart when you tire, he will bear both you and your burden. Psalm chapter 55 verse 22 Yet a little while, and you shall see the salvation of God. Remember of what age your daughter was, and that just so long was your lease of her. If she were eighteen, nineteen, or twenty years old, I know not, but sure I am, seeing her term was come, and your lease run out, you can no more justly quarrel against your great superior for taking his own at his just term day, than a poor farmer can complain that his master taketh a portion of his own land to himself when his lease is expired. Good mistress, if you would not be content that Christ would hold from you the heavenly inheritance which is made yours by his death, will not that same Christ think hardly of you? If you refuse to give him your daughter willingly, who is a part of his inheritance and conquest, I pray the Lord to give you all your own, and to grace you with patience to give God his also. He is an ill debtor, who payeth that which he hath borrowed with a grudge. Indeed, that long loan of such a good daughter and heir of grace, a member of Christ, as I believe, deserveth more thanks at your creditor's hand than that you should murmur when he craveth but his own. I believe you would judge them to be but thankless neighbors who would pay you a sum of money after this manner. But what, do you think her lost, when she is but sleeping in the bosom of the Almighty? Think her not absent, who is in such a friend's house. Is she lost to you who is found to Christ? If she were with a dear friend, although you should never see her again, your care for her would be but small. Oh, now, is she not with a dear friend, and gone higher, upon a certain hope that you shall, in the resurrection, see her again? When, be you sure, she shall neither be hectic nor consumed in body. You would be sorry either to be, or be esteemed an atheist, and yet not I, but the Apostle. First Thessalonians chapter 4 verse 13 Thinketh those to be hopeless atheists, who mourn excessively for the dead. But this is not a challenge on my part. I speak this only fearing your weakness. For your daughter was a part of yourself, and therefore nature in you, being, as it were, cut and halved, will indeed be grieved. But you have to rejoice that when a part of you is on earth, a great part of you is glorified in heaven. Follow her, but envy her not. For indeed it is self-love in us that maketh us mourn for them that die in the Lord. Why? Because for them we cannot mourn, since they are never happy till they be dead. Therefore we mourn on our own private account. Take heed, then, that in showing your affection and mourning for your daughter, you be not out of self-affection mourning for yourself. Consider what the Lord is doing in it, your daughter is plucked out of the fire, and she resteth from her labors. And your Lord in that is trying you, and casting you in the fire. Go through all fires to your rest. And now remember that the eye of God is upon the burning bush, and it is not consumed. And he is gladly content that such a weak woman as you should send Satan away, frustrated of his design. Now honor God, and shame the strong roaring lion, when you seem weakest. Should such an one as you faint in the day of adversity? Call to mind the days of old. The Lord yet liveth. Trust in him, although he should slay you. Faith is exceedingly charitable, 
and believeth no evil of God. Now is the Lord laying, in the one scale of the balance, your making conscience of submission to his gracious will, and in the other your affection and love to your daughter. Which of the two will you then choose to satisfy? Be wise then, and as I trust you love Christ better than a sinful woman, pass by your daughter and kiss the Lord's rod. Men lop the branches off their trees round about, to the end they may grow up high and tall. The Lord hath this way lopped your branch and taking from you many children, to the end you should grow upward, like one of the Lord's cedars, setting your heart above where Christ is at the right hand of the Father. What is next, but that your Lord cut down the stock after he hath cut the branches? Prepare yourself, you are nearer your daughter this day than you were yesterday. While you prodigally spend time and mourning for her, you are speedily posting after her. Run your race with patience, let God have his own, and ask of him instead of your daughter, whom he hath taken from you, the daughter of faith, which is patience, and in patience possess your soul. Lift up your head, you do not know how near your redemption doth draw, thus recommending you to the Lord, who is able to establish you, I rest, your loving and affectionate friend in the Lord Jesus, S.R. Letter number 3 To Lady Kenmure Madam, Grace, mercy, and peace be multiplied upon you. I receive your ladyship's letter, in which I perceive your case in this world savoreth of worship and communion with the Son of God in his sufferings. You cannot, you must not have a more pleasant or more easy condition here than he had, who, quote, through afflictions was made perfect, Hebrews chapter 2, verse 10. We may indeed think, Cannot God bring us to heaven with ease and prosperity? Who doubteth but he can? But his infinite wisdom thinketh and decreeth the contrary. And though we cannot see a reason for it, yet he hath a most just reason. We never with our eyes saw our own soul, yet we have a soul. We see many rivers, but we know not their first spring, an original fountain, yet they have a beginning. Madam, when you are come to the other side of the water, and have set down your foot on the shore of glorious eternity, and look back again to the waters and to your wearisome journey, and shall see in that clear glass of endless glory nearer to the bottom of God's wisdom, you shall then be forced to say, quote, If God had done otherwise with me than he hath done, I had never come to the enjoying of this crown of glory, end quote. It is your part now to believe and suffer and hope and wait on. For I protest in the presence of that all-discerning eye who knoweth that I write and what I think, that I would not want the sweet experience of consolations of God for all the bitterness of affliction. Nay, whether God come to his children with a rod or a crown, if he come himself with it, it is well. Welcome. Welcome, Jesus. What way soever thou come, if we can get a sight of thee, and sure I am, it is better to be sick, providing Christ come to the bedside and draw aside the curtains and say, quote, Courage, I am thy salvation, end quote, than to enjoy health, being lusty and strong, and never to be visited of God. Worthy and dear lady, in the strength of Christ, fight and overcome. You are now alone but you may have, for the seeking, three always in your company, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. I trust they are near you. You are now deprived of the comfort of a lively ministry. So were Israel in their captivity. Yet hear God's promise to them, quote, Therefore say, Thus saith the Lord God, although I have cast them far off from among the heathen, and although I have scattered them among the countries, Yet will I be to them as a little sanctuary in the countries where they shall come. Ezekiel chapter 11 verse 16 Behold, a sanctuary, for a sanctuary God himself in the place and room of the temple of Jerusalem. I trust in God that carrying this temple about with you, 
you shall see Jehovah's beauty in his house. We are in great fears of a great and fearful trial to come upon the kirk of God for these who would build their houses and nests upon the ashes of mourning Jerusalem have drawn our king upon hard and dangerous conclusions against such as are termed Puritans for the rooting of them out. Our prelates assure us that for such as will not conform there is nothing but imprisonment and deprivation. The spouse of Jesus will ever be in the fire, but I trust in my God she shall not consume, because of the good will of him who dwelleth in the bush, for he dwelleth in it with good will. All sorts of crying sins without controlment abound in our land. The glory of the Lord is departing from Israel, and the Lord is looking back over his shoulder to see if any will say, quote, Lord, tarry.